Hey, how's it going? John from Branson Cerakote and Laser here. Going to do a video we haven't done before, a top 10 list. And it's going to be the top 10 most common mistakes that I talk to people about either through email, text, or just on the phone. These are in no particular order, although the last one is probably the one that I get the most because it covers a bigger topic than the other ones that are, are fairly narrowly focused. So number 10 is dry spray. The three most common causes of dry spray are the small hole in the cap of your spray gun being clogged. Just during the normal operation of your HV <laughs> just during normal operation of your HVLP, coating will slosh around and get into that little hole in the cap on the that attaches to the bowl. When that hole gets plugged, even with wet coating, it doesn't allow air to be kind of sucked down in there and then mix with your stuff, and that's what basically allows it to siphon correctly. When it happens, you'll get dry spray. The second most common thing I see, especially on the Iwata with people with bigger hands, is they'll accidentally, just over time, just grabbing the gun, they'll close off that air valve, which is the one on the very bottom of the gun. It's very gradual. They'll be spraying fine and just start to see some problems, and then boom, they're doing dry spray. Not enough air is another really common cause of dry spray. And the third cause of dry spray that I hear about the most is just being too far away. If you're too far from the object that you're spraying, what happens is as the coating is traveling to your object, the solvent evaporates out in the air and you're, get, you're left with nothing but coating hitting your product. When that happens, it's not very smooth. It gives it a rough texture, which is dry spray. Easiest way to keep from having that is to just set your gun up correctly to start with, with your volume and everything, and stay the same distance that you did your test on the paper from your item. Number nine would be incorrect sanding. And by that, what I mean is either not sanding enough, sanding too much, sanding at too high of a pressure, too low of a pressure, or using the incorrect sandblast media. Not sanding enough will leave too much of that factory finish on there and you won't get good adhesion with the surface. The one caveat to that is anodizing. Uh, anodizing is going to be the only coating on your item that you can just scuff and go on. Uh, everything else has to go down to bare metal. Over sanding is probably more of a cost problem. The more you sand, the more your compressor runs, the more you're beating up your nozzles, your abrasive, everything else. Once you've sanded it and you've etched the surface, move on to the next part. Continuing to sand really doesn't do anything to improve your project. The Cerakote booklet says if it's still shiny, you haven't sanded enough. My problem with that is if you keep sanding and keep sanding, you're, it's really counterproductive. So you need to look for, you've taken off the old coating and you give it a couple of good passes and you're good to go. You don't need to keep sanding and sanding and sanding. Sanding at too high a pressure is generally not a problem when it comes to metals. However, if you sand polymer at too high of a pressure, you'll spall. It'll, it'll have little ticks that, that come up in it and you'll also crater your polymer and there is no fixing that. The, the Cerakote will not fill that in. You've basically just bought somebody a frame. What I usually recommend is start out at a lower pressure, hit your polymer. All you're looking to do is make it go from shiny to dull. If it's just not doing it, turn it up literally maybe one or two PSI at a time. And usually within a short period of time, you'll find a good area in there where it's just doing what you want it to do. Remember, obviously with polymer, you're not removing a coating, you're just etching the surface. Number eight is incorrect tacking. Tacking is one of those kind of more art than science types of things. When you put something in the oven, and I, I talk about in a lot of the videos that, you know, six minutes for polymer, eight minutes for aluminum, and 10 to 12 for heavy steel. Just understand that that varies by oven. If you have an oven that's much more efficient, it's kind of smaller and it holds heat better, it's probably going to tack out quicker. If you have an oven where when you open a door, 90% of your heat comes out, you're probably going to have to go longer. So tacking is not so much a time and a temperature as is a temperature and then a feel of the product. Generally, when I set polymer in there for six minutes, it's still going to be tacky when I touch it. However, it's not going to be wet where I'm going to leave a fingerprint. So that tacky zone, you go from wet to tacky where it's just a little bit sticky to dry. As soon as it goes to that dry where you don't feel any more stickiness, you need to pull that out of the oven. And the big reason why is that if you over bake this stuff and it gets into the hard zone, you may or may not, some, some colors are more forgiving than others, but you may or may not have an issue with adhesion. If you spray Hunter Orange on something and then 
over overcook it, get it too hard, and go back and put more coating on it, I will almost 100% guarantee it's not going to stick. What will happen is it just flakes off like sunburn. It just comes off in big chips and flakes. And the reason for that is Cerakote does not stick to fully cured Cerakote. If you're spraying a, a dark brown and then you spray black over it, you may actually get away with it, but it's not going to be very durable. I get a lot of phone calls about people who have sprayed their base coat, they put it in the oven and they go an hour at 300, bring it out, let it cool, and then spray another layer on top of that. That's going to give you all kinds of problems. So make sure you're tacking correctly. And we have a video on our channel that talks about tacking a little more specifically. Number seven would be over degreasing. Once you've degreased something and you put it in the oven and you gas it out, leave it alone. By going back and using brake cleaner or more acetone or anything like that, you're taking the chance of adding contamination back to your item. Once it's degreased, it's degreased. Once it's degreased, it's degreased. Even putting it back in your acetone tank is not a good idea because you're always going to have sediment and things that have dissolved in your acetone floating around in there and there's a danger of that getting back on your surface. Number six would be not mixing the hardener in enough. When you put the coating and the hardener in your cylinder and you stretch that glove over it, you need to shake that vigorously. I mean, I normally tell people act like a paint shaker back and forth. Don't go up and down. All that's doing sloshing it around. So back and forth for the minimum of a minute will normally do it. If for some reason you don't mix it enough, what you end up with are small blisters in your surface. Number five would be probably spraying too lightly. What will happen if you spray lightly, especially on your base coat, is it's just not durable and it's also going to have a rough texture to it. You need to be at one mil for your base coat. Everything after that you do spray lightly because you don't want to build up. Those coats after the, the base coat are just ornamental. The key to spraying correctly is just consistent speed, consistent distance, and consistently being set up correctly on your paper. Number four would be just the opposite, spraying too heavy. What happens, especially on your base coat, if you're, you're too heavy, and, and what the most common way that that happens is people keep going over it and over it and over it. If you got one good consistent wet coat and you're overlapping all the way in your item, there's no need to go back and spray anymore. What will happen a lot of times if you're too heavy is your surface will be bonded correctly, your outside visual surface will be hard, but in between it's a little bit soft and it'll end up, not all these, but a lot of times it'll end up just flaking off. Number three would be water in your lines. What will happen with water in the lines is as you're spraying, you'll get small craters that will develop on your surface, especially with the lighter colors like white or yellow. And what that is is small droplets of water hitting your surface, cratering it, and then instantly evaporating. There's no way to get them out. You've got to just basically start over. Generally, what happens is you get your compressor has run too much, and it's gotten a lot of water in it, and it's really hot inside your compressor, and you don't have an air dryer. That moisture then gets pushed through your system and comes out your gun and you end up with the craters. I tell everyone that the first thing that you should upgrade in your shop is to the IWAT LPH80. It's going to give you a big margin for error. But the second most important would be the air dryer. Your air comes out of the tank, goes through a desiccant filter, and then goes into that unit hot. As it comes out, at least ours in particular, it is instantly chilled to 35 degrees. So all the moisture that's in your system is then removed. Number nine would probably be no air cure. Cerakote mentions it very briefly in their instruction booklet. When you spray something, it has to go to a rack to air cure for eight to 10 minutes. What that air cure allows it to do is the solvent evaporates out and it also levels the coating down into the etching. The two problems you'll run into if you skip this step is your coating will oftentimes have shiny areas and dull areas. And what that is, is the solvent being baked directly into your coating. The other problem you'll have is it doesn't bond correctly to your surface because it hasn't had the time it needed to level. And probably what I picked as the number one that, that, like I said, covers a lot of things is listening to the internet. There's a lot of really bad information out there. There's a lot of unfortunately bad YouTube videos that show things that you shouldn't do. I see scuff the surface with Scotch-Brite or sandpaper. I see all kinds of weird degreasing things. And I see a lot of people spraying really, really thin. Your best option is to find someone like us that doesn't mind answering questions. Give us a call, shoot us an email. I've got no problem with answering questions for people. Find someone who's willing to help you so that you don't ruin your project. So that's pretty much it. Leave some comments down below if you've run into other things that I didn't put on this list and I'll be happy to talk to you about them. If you have any questions, like I said, don't feel 
like you're imposing on me or you're bothering me, just give me a call, shoot me an email, shoot me a text. The phone number that's on our website is my cell phone. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and check us out at BrancisHaircoat.com for all your stencil and laser needs. Have a great day. <laughs>